Hello, today we're talking about another lens from Viltrox that I got for review uh, from Viltrox. Uh, I have previously reviewed their 85 for the RF mount and their 50 for the Sony E mount. And now I have the 24 for the E mount. And the previous two lenses I got for review, they were kind of cool. I, I reviewed them on the channel, but I didn't really intend to keep using them myself. However, this 24 is different. And this is a lens that definitely stays in my backpack. And let me explain why. So this 24 is uh, actually very similar to the 50. It kind of looks even the same on the outside, pretty much the same kind of build, uh, same size. Uh, again, the build quality is very, very solid. Like uh, you can you can check out the review of the 50 mil for the E mount that I had on my channel, have on my channel. Very similar, really nice, smooth focusing ring. You have also the manual aperture control here. You can set it to A, which means that you can control it from the camera, or you can just set it to whatever value you like here on the ring itself. And that way the camera will not be able to control it, but you can just leave it at A and use it like any other lens. This lens also has autofocus and has the maximum aperture of, of, of f1.8, which for me as a mainly astrophotography oriented sort of person and YouTube channel, this is very important that this lens opens up to f1.8 because I will be able to use it for several applications. And that's why I say that it stays in my backpack. So with an 24 f1.8, my main actually purpose for this lens is to do astro vlogs. If I'm out at night, I'm trying to film myself doing something, having a wide lens like a 24 on a full frame camera with a bright maximum aperture like f1.8 really lets me film at night even with no external lighting altogether. I can just crank up the ISO on my Sony a7S II to higher values and I can really use it in, at, at night for that purpose. And let me show you a clip I have recorded recently in my trip to the mountains. As you can see, here is a real life footage from just looking at the stars. And as you can see the image, like it's still pretty noisy. There, there is no miracle here, but it's definitely way better than what I was uh, having before, because before that I was using a old Canon 20 to 35 something uh, zoom lens with like f3.5 maximum aperture so if with, if with f1.8 you can really do some nighttime filming in real time footage of the night sky which for me is something that i really really appreciate with this lens also of course a 24 is perfect for milky way photography and i tried this lens um, to shoot just stationary on a tripod again with um, the Sony a7S II. I can crank, crank up the ISO and get really clean images. And I tested it with various apertures to see how, the, especially the corners of the image are going to look. And I gotta say the corners are pretty good. Even at f1.8, the maximum aperture, there is no huge like visible aberrations in the corners. There is some astigmatism and some coma, but I've definitely seen worse. And I think, and this rings true to all of the Viltrox lenses that I have tested, the 50, the 85, and now the 24. They are both really, really impressive at maximum aperture in the corners. Of course, there is some vignetting. And of course, as you stop down the aperture, both the vignetting and the apparitions are smaller. So you can definitely stop it down to f2 or f2.8. You can put it on a tracker and whatever. But if you just want to shoot untracked for Milky Way photography, uh, you can definitely do that even if at f1.8 and then you can deal with vignetting in post-production and the artifacts and corners are really negligible in my opinion. So I think I would definitely recommend this lens as a budget option for E-mount uh, for, for Sony full-frame cameras if you're into Milky Way photography. Uh, it retails 379 or something like less than $400 which is definitely cheaper than what Sony has in their offering for a bright um, sort of prime 24 millimeter lens so definitely worth checking out the links will be down below and if you are into filming um filming at, at dim conditions filming at night doing astro vlogs then this lens is definitely i think something that i would highly recommend and probably my go-to lens it is cheaper than sony it is just as good i think uh definitely like for, for filming it is bright enough f1.8 is bright enough to do some nighttime vlogging and yeah, this lens really, really stays in my backpack. And again, thanks Viltrox for sending it over. I can definitely recommend it. You can check out um, some sample images. Um, I will link them down below if you wanna pixel peep yourself. 
um yeah recommended and by the way this episode is filmed on the iphone 14 pro in cinematic mode using the front selfie camera let me know down below how do you think about the quality of this video uh, compared to the quality of my other videos that i usually film on my canon eos r because i gotta say it's pretty convenient to just put my phone on the camera on the tripod and just talk to the camera i think the quality is really impressive on the iphone 14 pro and by the way i have a video where i tested the iphone 14 pro for astrophotography so if you have not checked it out yet check it out you might be surprised how uh um, what this phone is capable of for Astro. So see you in my next video, hopefully clear skies and bye-bye.